show this Black Friday, you can sleep in. Black all over the region. Retailers are calling this their soup. 149,000 stores offering Millions sales of in the in cash government. sales changing hands. The stores. The flu season is off to its earliest start. Appears to be a previously unknown variant of the flu. Really? Suspected case catching many experts off guard. Today I was feeling like maybe I. Back on the breaking news, leading with unconfirmed reports of a, a smallpox small outbreak. outbreak is a highly rehearsed scenario. And National Guard units converging no on a hospital trains. in Central Bridges Manhattan. are closed. It's a more than a is a very real more danger. More than a There's not enough vaccines. Let me stop you there. This is not a panic situation. An entire American city. Well, known as the Green Poison, Central Park has been converted to a mass burial ground. Power outages, gas line leaks, fires. The government's We're expecting season. another night of widespread looting. The people of New York are begging. What would it? Fire and the first responders are either dead. No resources available. Being treated like animals. It's not a job. We're not trained for. When we were activated, we knew the situation was bad. Worse than anyone knew. We are an elite, highly skilled group of embedded agents. They only call us when everything else has failed. We have no rules. We have no limits. Our job is to protect what remains. We are your co-workers. We are your neighbors. We might even be your friends. And when we get the call, we leave everything behind. We are the division. We're losing this whole neighborhood. Riders are moving through, in force, and headed this way. Put your people there. I see someone else got the call. I'm Agent Fei Lau, Division. Activated at the same time as you, part of the second wave of us going in. I don't know what happened to the first wave, but unfortunately, there's still lots left for us to do. We don't have much intel, and we don't have the luxury of failure. Not with Manhattan under lockdown and Brooklyn on the brink. People like me. And you. We're what's left to hold the line. With any luck, we'll have more to go on once we rendezvous with the commander. More about the situation, about who's turning the streets into a war zone. Anything that's gonna help us do what we're supposed to do. Now, if you'll excuse me, Lieutenant. Officer Hazen and his team are handling situation reports. If you're looking for a hot spot, that's who you want to talk to. Far behind that building. Best whiskey sours in Manhattan. If we take this city back, I'll buy you a drink. Sorry. I mean, when we take it back. Uh, here it comes. The rest of us should be in this chopper. I can't believe it's finally happening.
Okay. Hell, at this point, you're more okay than me. Shit. That explosion took out the commander. We have a job to do. We're still gonna do it. It's just... Landing in one minute. Should be able to see it coming up on my right. We need our base up and running, and we need to show the people of New York they're getting their city back. Our base of operations has potential, but right now it's a piece of shit and we've got no one to staff it. To get this place where it needs to be, we need people who know what they're doing. Like doctors. There's a virologist running a field hospital over at Madison Square Garden, but the whole area has gone to shit. With her, we can get our medical facilities online. Without her... The JTF commander, Benitez, is out in the field, and he's gone offline. Bring him back. We need him to set up a functional security wing, and it'll do a hell of a lot for morale. We've also got to restore basic services. We need power and the intel the grid can give us. They had a guy working on that, but it sounds like he ran into trouble patching us in. Without him, it's lights out. Hey, bad news. I'm not gonna be able to get out there, not with my goddamn leg like this. I'll do what I can from here, but it's not the same. You have no idea how much I wanted to be in the field. I trained for a scenario like this my entire life, but it's worse than anything we could have imagined. You know how they won't let you get too close to anyone, so it won't mess you up when you're finally activated? Well, I did that, and it didn't fucking work. I'm attached. These are my people, this is my city. We're taking it back. Oh. Look, you need to... Yeah, okay. Okay. They're counting on us. Let's not let them down. Well, look who it is. Thanks for getting me out of the garden. I've been in some hostile work environments before, but Jesus. Of course... It's not like this place is gonna win any prizes either. Antique equipment, zero staff, patients lining up out the door. This isn't gonna cut it. We're doing the best we can, Dr. Candle. Any suggestions you might have, I'm happy to listen. I know, I know. Beggars, choosers, all that crap. What matters is beating this thing, but I can't do that without knowing more about it. Here's a good place to start. Sarah is pretty sure Dr. Gordon Amherst had something to do with the outbreak. God. That asshole. Saw him present a paper at Columbia once. He nearly started a riot. He's part of this? I need to talk to him. Anything of his you can find. Notebooks, laptops, close personal friends, I need that too. And we need to talk about live samples and antibodies. You're gonna be busy. And you'll be? Fixing this. Saving lives. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll get started. One cut. One cut's gonna make you bleed. But one cut don't kill you. One cut just makes a scar. We're gonna fucking fight him. A deeper cut. We're gonna fucking fight him. We're gonna get him. We're gonna... Makes you cry. 
But you can turn that cry into a roar, or you can turn it into a whimper. That's your choice. I can't take it. So you can choose to be a victim, no matter where you at. I can't take it. Top of the penthouse, in a prison cell, or even free. Roam in your own streets again. Complain about the cold, the rats. Complain about who's in charge. Some people want to stay the victim. They want to cry. I'll give you what you want. You want to be the victim? <laughs> well, I'll make you one. I'll make you one. Me? I'm going to take what's mine. They say this disease is a tragedy. They say it's the end of the world. Oh, yeah. This disease is our teacher. Oh, hell yes. Teaching the uniforms that they done. Teaching us to rise up. They taken from us long enough. All now right. we take from them. Their houses, their cars, their families, their lives. This is our time. And now is our time. Hell yeah. It's our time. Units, we have a possible 1013. Be on the lookout for car 5-5. Over. Hang on. Is that it? Oh, no. Let me call it in. Dispatch car 24. We have visual on unit 5-5. Looks abandoned. Over. Copy that. Over. Mother oh! Christ! Shit, they're behind us! Forget it. Just go. Now, now! Dispatch, this is car 24. We are over... Two, four. What's going on Fuck. out there? This is car 2-4. Uh, we are... Oh, we're gonna get back, oh, back, back, back up, back up, back up! Run! Come on over. Captain Benita's even found some fresh coffee. Uh, I just happened to walk by what's left of Kerman's. So what we're responsible for is Midtown to Lower Manhattan, mainly because nobody can get off of this island right now, including us. Mm -hmm. Biggest problem we have is manpower, or lack thereof. Right now we got criminal elements occupying and controlling most of these neighborhoods. Rikers, cleaners, street gangs. Yeah, I don't have enough people to secure a block, much less maintain order and safety, so... Basically, these assholes are running around taking whatever they want and killing whoever they want because we got nobody to stop them. Which means we get the task of cleaning up these neighborhoods so we can at least get food and medical aid to the residents. I don't know. I mean, an area this size, this many bad guys, I don't think you people can handle it alone. I mean, no offense. I just don't like the idea of throwing you to the wolves. Captain, we are the wolves. Right. Well... Then maybe you can convince the division to send more of your guys. For the time being, what you see is what you get. I can't believe I'm begging the feds to take over my city. Any intel we receive, you'll be the first to know. Good luck. You'll need it. Look, I don't do sentimental, but you got me out of a jam there, so thanks. I know you want more from me than just warm fuzzies, friend. Save my sorry ass. Like getting this shit all up to par. Oh, government standard, I see. Nice to see they're still keeping the bar low enough that even roaches can walk right over it. You want quality? You go private. That's what I learned in Basra. Oh, yeah. See, you can't just live on farts and good intentions. Power, water, all the bells and whistles. Not that you're the first one to try it. I hear a bunch of you people went missing when the shit hit the fan. I had some theories about that myself. My point is, when you're out there hooking up the city, poke around a bit, see what you can find out. Maybe the virus got him. Maybe the brutes got him. Maybe the city opened up its rotten core and swallowed them whole. I'd believe that. It's happened before. Fucking city got my wife. Miracle, I'm still here, really. You know, they say a pessimist is a disillusioned romantic. Well. Whoever said that's a fucking asshole. Go on. See what you can find out. 
I'll let you know which shit to hook up. Careful, this fucking city doesn't eat you too. Can't believe the bullshit that went down in the dark zone at the end there. I know. We had it. Everything I told them was dead on. They made us pull out anyway. And we left our dead behind. Yeah, we're not supposed to do that. Hang on a second. Look, we don't leave people behind. We're here to make sure this city doesn't get left behind. But the people we're working with, they're just fine. We're leaving all of us behind if it's convenient. Look, I don't agree with that because this has just been made, but I am saying it's time to leave them behind. Their model doesn't work anymore. If we're smart, we cut it loose before it drags us down, before it kills us. You're talking treason. I'm talking common sense. Look around. There's nothing left to say. The JTF is trying to save a Manhattan that doesn't exist anymore. It is all about power now. Power and survival. They are done, but I am not. And you won't be either. Not if you work with me. One of the things that makes a virus lethal is adaptation. Rapid mutation makes it harder for antibodies to identify and drugs to kill. What we're seeing in the samples you pulled from the population at the train yard is the degree of genetic drift green poison is already experiencing, and it's significant, which means it'll be that much harder to find a vaccine. Samples of the original green poison pathogen the ones we recovered off the currency used as a primary transmission vector, let us take a closer look at the virus's basic genome. What I found was clear evidence the bug had been manufactured. There's genetic material there from a half dozen other pathogens bolted onto smallpox to make a more efficient killing machine. Hey there, I... Give me a second. Yes? I'm sorry, Dr. Kendall, but the sample's not producing results that... Did you run them at room temperature? Uh, you said... I said room goddamn temperature. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we're within temperature variances. You know what? I'll do it myself. Just put it down and we'll both pretend this never happened. Hard to believe you can't find good help in the middle of a pandemic, right? Anyway, the good news is we are up and running on what you've brought in so far. Dr. Ellis taking over the hospital wing was a lifesaver. Now I can focus on research. My wife always says I'm better with pathogens than with people. My ex-wife. Funny. Anyways, you just keep doing what you're doing. We are halfway to a blueprint for a vaccine, and with your help, we will get the rest. What you're looking at is the smallpox virus. It normally takes one to two weeks for it to incubate in a host, and it's not contagious while it's doing so. Looking at Amherst's notes, it's clear he wanted to change that, to make green poison infectious while it developed, and to speed up that incubation process to make it spread faster. In English, it's more contagious and it reproduces faster. And that's bad.
He did real good, hooking stuff up. Almost gives a guy like me hope again. <laughs> well, that's a goddamn miracle. I said almost, Agent Lau. So what you found while you were out there is keep me up at night. Looks like I ain't paranoid after all. I'm just right. I mean, here you got the smartest, most powerful, most weaponized agents in the world, and still, somebody goes off the rails. Yeah, well, they're not gonna win, no matter what you might believe. Oh, you think I'm not on your side, Agent? You think I'm just a cynic who doesn't give a shit? I'm a goddamn patriot. That's why this shit upsets me. You know why democracy works? It's a balance. We don't just got rights, we got responsibilities, too. People don't realize just how fucking precious this shit is. Jury duty, voting. Oh, it can all get away from you in a second. You don't do your bit. Nobody gets a free lunch. Hell, this country is set up so that nobody can go run things by themselves. Balance of powers. And then some asshole decides to create the division. It breaks everything. All of the power, none of the accountability. It's the opposite of everything this country stands for. Of course it didn't work. So now, what do we got left? Good intentions. Hey, and us. All of us. And I've got a hell of a lot more than good intentions. We are gonna do this. And we're gonna do it the right way. I want that to be true, Agent. I do. But I don't see what makes you different from the rest. I just hope for all our sakes that you are. Soldiers of the last man battalion, this is your commanding officer, Lieutenant Colonel Charles Bliss. There were those among us who were angry when the decision was made to leave us behind. Leave us to die, as some people said. But I looked around at this city, and I saw opportunity. I saw what it had been. And I saw what it could be once again if someone had the guts to fight for it. If there were men willing to go out in the streets and take them back from the degenerates and lowlifes who ruled them now, to do what the cowardly government and its fearful, weak soldiers were too afraid to do, and to cut down all the liars and murderers and thieves who stand in the way of peace. We will not look back. We will not compromise. We will do whatever it takes to ensure a better tomorrow for all those who stand with us. And those who stand against us, may God have mercy on their souls. Bliss out. Tell me we got that. Because God damn it, I'm not doing it a second time. Oh, look who it is. Hey, hey, it's the conquering hero. Gotta say, I didn't think anybody could pull off what we asked you to do. Best part is you freed up my first responders to go where they could do the most good. Not bad for feds, huh? I've seen worse. Take a look. Every criminal group that we've been dealing with is on the run. They're not all gone, but there's a lot less of them out there. And it shows. Residents are feeling safe enough to come out onto the streets again. JTF was able to help Sarah get their tents back up and running. They've got people lining up around the block getting food and medical attention. We're finally starting to get some traction out there. Well, I ran into the guy who runs my neighborhood deli in Queens. He's actually talking about reopening at some point. You know, if I squint, I can almost see New York again. How about that? All right, that's enough back padding for one day. LMB's still out there pissing me off. I've got work to do. And so do you, Agent. Get to it. Hey. You got skills, pal. On your feet, you. You will regret this. I you! Swear. You there! Hey! Give me that! We've got confirmation that green poison wasn't bred. It was coded. Specifically, he picked up on his buddy Chernenko's research about modifying virus genomes in a virtual space, kicked it up a few notches, and fed the result into an industrial protein replicator. What came out the other end was a working virus, one he could keep tweaking to achieve maximum effect. By which I mean, dead people.
I don't want to get ahead of ourselves here, but I think we've got something. Thanks to you, we have mapped the genetic drift on green poison. Plus, I have ID'd all the aftermarket DNA Amherst bolted onto it. And thanks to those samples you picked up from the survivors, I was able to harvest antibodies against our friendly neighborhood superbug, and that let me lay out a roadmap for a vaccine. Here. Take a look. Normally, I'd take point on the team developing that, but they're a little better equipped to handle it in an arbor. And me? Well, I'm stuck here with you. Which is fine. God knows there's plenty left for me to do here. And with Chernenko and maybe Amher still out there, all it would take is one psycho asking the right questions. Tell me we're not going to see that. Please. Dr. Dr. Campbell, you're needed in the recovery ward. Dr. Dr. Campbell. Still lots for me to do. Hey. You know we can't survive this again. So please. What you're looking at is the smallpox virus, one of the deadliest pathogens on the planet. For centuries, it did a wonderful job of helping keep the human population in check. But times change, and sometimes Mother Nature needs a hand in improving her creations. Like, say, speeding them up a little bit, making them contagious when they should be quietly incubating in a host, or making them more lethal. I didn't come up with the approach on my own. My friend Vitaly is one of the pioneers in the field, and the idea has been around for years. Genome as data. You see, once we digitized DNA, we made it infinitely mutable. We could do a thousand virtual variations in the time it used to take to grow a one-lab-grade generation of pathogens. And we could pick the best, most lethal combinations and make them real. That's how you make a killer virus, you see. Mix in genetic code from other diseases, and you move the sliders all the way up on lethality and virulence. The goal was a 90% mortality rate. I'm not sure my green poison is going to quite hit that, but honestly, that's just details. As long as most of humanity goes, the Earth stands a fighting chance. Technically, technology is what's killing the planet. But that's not really the case. It's the greed that drives the technology. But a funny thing happened on the way to $100 genome maps and 3D printed plastic toys. Someone figured out those technologies could be repurposed modified for the greater good. Me. Now, my virus is going to do what nature's always done. Decide who lives and who dies. And if nature decides I die, then I die. If nothing else, I'll have a lot of company. Natural selection at its finest. Helped along by a little unnatural genetic manipulation. It's all data, really. Life's just a method of processing it. The same way I processed the smallpox genome on my laptop. And who's to say that wasn't the plan all along? If, by some miracle, you survive green poison, then nature's decided you deserve to live. The rest of us shouldn't and won't. Godspeed. I'll see you in hell.